Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so my church members, I'm so sorry. Y'all been waiting patiently, and then the onliners. Uh, I've been AWOL for a while. I'm so sorry about that. But uh, anyway, tonight's teaching, I want to make up to the onliners and the people to my church tonight on today's uh, teaching. Um, also, uh, to my church people, the reason why I haven't uh, upload, uh, I haven't uh, pressed live till now is because I ha gave all the exciting announcements. Like I promised you guys, I had a few surprises. Few, right? It was just a few surprises, right, guys? Yeah. So they're super psyched out. My, the people in my church are probably bawling and wailing like, no, what are they, what are they? So I'll, I'll tell you Sunday, all right? I'll tell you Sunday, yeah. But uh, it's, it's not really exciting, don't worry, you know. So. But I'm sure you'll be very, very happy when I announce to you Sunday my church, all right? So your pastor's been busy. I know it's been tough uh, for our church the past couple of weeks, but I come with... Uh, Great Christmas gifts, so to speak, because you all had a crummy Christmas. But anyway, uh, aside from that, point is, uh, joking aside, is that we're going to do a lot of exciting things in our church, and I want to make up uh, for the past absence, uh, for my past absence in video uploading, I want to make it up to the onliners and to the people in my church. And I know what subject, what subject would be a big blessing, and it's better than the end time conspiracy thing. It's better than the really deep, mysterious doctrine. Uh, tonight's teaching, we're gonna go on prayer. So I know that you're gonna all love this one. So I, I knew that you, I wouldn't let you down on this one. So it's gonna be a great teaching on prayer. It's, I, it has been a long time since I taught prayer. I know that it's one of my, uh, it's probably my favorite subject to teach. and. Uh, Maybe most of my members too, probably. But I know we love the subject on prayer. Amen. It's truly life-changing, right? So I'm going to give you a whole hour of teaching on prayer, okay? And one of the subjects in prayer, okay? Not, the, not everything in prayer, just one of the subjects in prayer. All right. So now this is, uh, as I start teaching, okay, in this subject of prayer, if you're going to think about What's the most important thing to pray about, right? So in our minds, we would probably think like, well, uh, usually when we pray, what's important to us, right? Mm -hmm. That's usually the first thing in our minds that we pray about. And obviously, that's not the most important thing. Another thing uh, to us is that we're thinking, well, uh, asking forgiveness of sins because God's not going to hear my prayer if I don't confess my sin to him or repent. That's actually true, but it's more of a necessity, I feel like. It's more of a have to thing for us, for us. Then you might say, well, it's the filling power of the Holy Spirit because that's dramatic and life-changing. Yeah, that's actually true. Um, I, I pray for the filling power of the Holy Spirit a couple times a day, actually. That's that's how we can get a powerful meeting, right? So if there's any fruit that I've gotten from my ministry, it's not because of yours truly. It's because of that prayer, the filling power of the Spirit, which is very important. So uh, suffering is extremely powerful. Uh, I taught about prayers of blood, and the blood is one of the most powerful elements that would drive away demons. But believe it or not, in my opinion, so this is just my opinion, what I believe from the Word of God, those are not the most important things in prayer to God. The most important thing in prayer to God is thanksgiving. It's basically, to, uh, when we think about thanks, it's to give Him credit. And when we give Him credit, the idea is we're praising Him, right? And when we're praising him, we realize what's one of the number one thing God, that's the secret ingredient in prayer, if you recall. It's to glorify his glory, right? It's about God's glory. Uh, Moses was able to change the mind of God in prayer because he concentrated on his glory. So then, no wonder this would be, in my opinion, the most important thing in prayer because it concentrates on his glory. See that? It concentrates on his glory. 
So if you utilize this tool mightily for the Lord, then you're going to see a lot of powerful answers in prayer. Now, thanks. E.M. Bounds, he said this in his work that basically you cannot, uh, that prayer and thanksgiving are basically interchangeable and that it's like a repetitive cycle. If you ever pray to the Lord, you ha thanks will have to come out. And whenever you thank the Lord, prayer will have to come out. Uh, he said that thanksgiving would concentrate on the past, whereas the prayer would concentrate on the future. So Ian Bounds has a lot of good quotes. But thanksgiving is very, very, um, basically, uh, I'm, I may not be using good English on this one, but it's like immutable. It's like, uh, it's firmly ingrained with prayer. You cannot separate that. Now, the sad thing is this, if we are to seriously think about it, if this is the most important thing in prayer, I wonder if this is the least thing you pray about. Because uh, we're sooner to pray off a list of all the needs of people, right? But we forget to thank Him. So if this is the most important thing, why is this probably the most neglected then? Now, I'm going to have to admit, because I'm not, a holy, uh, I'm not a spiritual guy, but I am guilty of this. I am guilty of this. And then uh, I've started to learn more to uh, include thanksgiving in my prayer. Even just normal prayer requests, I have to include thanksgiving. It's so important that uh, we give thanksgiving to the Lord. Now... Uh, the reason why this is a very basic, that's the first thing I want to say is it's a basic. Look at Matthew 26. Matthew 26. It's a basic to thank the Lord when you pray. Y you want the evidence? I'll give you evidence. The evidence is there is one thing you don't neglect in praying. You might neglect a lot of things and you might neglect your prayer habit, your prayer walk, but I know there's one thing that you don't dare skip in prayer. And that's thanking the Lord for your food before you, uh, before you eat. Unless there's someone guilty of doing that, then you ought to be ashamed of yourself. But I trust nobody does that here, right? You know? So then, because of that, then Thanksgiving should be a basic. You see that? If that's something we don't even dare skip, then why do we skip? Uh, then why do we make this the least priority, right? If it's the most basic. So in thanksgiving and prayer, we have to understand that it's an important basic. Look what Jesus did. Look at Matthew chapter 26, verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and what? Blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples. Uh, look at verse 27. And he took the cup and gave what? thanks. See, so Jesus Christ, before he partook in the meal and then the grape juice, he gave thanks to the Lord. He gave thanks to the Lord. So it is very, very important that um, you realize that thanksgiving is a basic ingredient in prayer. All right, that should be a given. Now, we have to utilize this. Go to Colossians 4. Colossians 4. Notice that thanksgiving is truly ingrained with prayer. They go hand in hand. I would encourage every person that whenever, whenever, whenever they pray, you have to include a thanks. I really believe that. It's even beneficial psychologically speaking. I real, and I'm going to show you the secrets of that one too. All right, I'm making up for all the, my absence here, all right? I'm going to give you a lot of good stuff tonight, all right? So I'm going to give you a lot of good stuff tonight. Uh, unfortunately, I can only do one teaching tonight, so I just want to let the people know that so there won't be a second one. But I will make this real good, all right? I, I'll make this real good for you guys. All right, verse 2. Continue in prayer. So that's a given. We have to constantly pray, right? But notice right here, and watch in the same with what? Thanksgiving. The same. Do you see that right there? So prayer and thanksgiving have to be done same. That's important to understand. 
the same time. Now I'm going to give you some interesting things here about why Thanksgiving is beneficial psychologically speaking too, scientifically speaking. It's interesting, but there were a lot of uh, psychological studies done on gratitude as well as prayer. And those two things have been psychologically and scientifically extremely beneficial for a person's well-being, believe it or not. But you know, the scripture was already a long time ago ahead of you. All right. Now, in order to cover this, uh, let's first of all go to Philippians. You remember this? You know what passage I'm going to go to. I talked about this one. Go to Philippians 4. It's one of my favorite chapters. Philippians 4. There was a lot of gold mine in Philippians 4. Remember that? Yeah. So for those of you online who don't know, I would recommend um, a sermon that I preached. Uh, my life changed when I met Mr. Glad, and it was based off of all the promises of Philippians 4. But there's a lot of gold mine in Philippians 4. Go to our verse-by-verse -verse Bible study in Philippians, and then you'll know. It'll be a big blessing, Philippians 4. All right, but let's concentrate on prayer here. Verse 6. Be careful for nothing. So in other words, uh, you drop your worries, right? And how this is psychologically beneficial is, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Now notice right here, everything, everything, did it say everything? So everything that is prayed for, it is with, see that? It is with thanksgiving. If you were to do that, notice it says, be careful for nothing. Did you notice that? So then what does this uh, do in return? It gets rid of these, uh, this turmoil in the mind here. So I told you it's something psychological. One is the worries. The second thing, notice the next verse, and the peace of God, right? At the next verse, the peace of God which passeth all understanding. So notice right here that the peace of God is attained. Now here's a question. In our minds, we're thinking if we surrender everything to God in prayer, then our worries should be subsided and we should attain peace. But let's be honest, sometimes we don't uh, sense that, right? The reason why is because that passage says, with thanksgiving. Yeah. Now, you might say, why is that? Because here's the idea, and I'm even just speaking from a psychological perspective. But you'll notice how this matches up already with Scripture, because I already told you that. How this matches up scripturally, and I'm going to give you the psychological babble for this, is think about it, is when you're praying and all you're doing is pouring out your complaint and worry and fear, yeah. what is your mind concentrating on? Negative. It's concentrating on the negative. Yeah. See that? So you think that by pouring out more negatives that you gain peace? No, that's not the case. You think that magically somehow it just washes away and it's just uh, God fills you up with so much peace in the brain? No, not with that negative thing floating in your mind and you're concentrating so much on the negative. But the idea is this, is that when you pour out the negative to the Lord and trust in Him to take care of it, so faith is a factor, obviously. You trust in Him, but it doesn't end there. What happens is then you start to thank Him. And I kind of gave, I kind of taught you that in the previous Philippian study. For example, you get in a car accident and you say, oh God, you know, my car is a wreck. And uh, man, I'm in trouble right here. There's a lot of money lost and uh, we got in uh, and there were, it was a big car wreck. I can't drive. Uh, Lord, please take care of this issue. Provide our needs right here. But then you have to thank him. And then when you thank him, you go, but thank you, Lord, that none of us got hurt. Yeah. Now when you, and then you start concentrating on that. Thank you, Lord, that man, it is a miracle. It's a close call. They almost killed us, but they didn't kill us. Only a great God can do that. Thank you so much, Heavenly Father. And when you do that, what happens? Then that negative part you surrender to the Lord, you trust Him, you'd have faith. Why? 
because you've seen the positive part that you're thanking him on, on his miraculous work where he protected you from that car wreck. So if it's a, only a God thing that protected you on that, why are you worried about the next thing? Yeah. See that? So it's so important that you combine it with thanksgiving. When you do that, you get more peace in return. That is very important. Faith is a main ingredient in prayer. So I'm going to put that in. That's just a bonus. I'm not covering faith tonight, but faith is, in, uh, is a main ingredient in everything in prayer. So this ink is definitely gone. So, But uh, faith is throughout all of this, faith. But what helps your faith increase is when you start putting the thanksgiving right here in everything, okay? The power of thanksgiving is extremely powerful right here. And it will do something in return right here. Now, we see how it's beneficial to the mind. Let's go back here, okay? Uh, if we, uh, you don't have to turn back here, but if you recall Colossians 4.2... The verse says something interesting. It says, continue in prayer and what? It said, watch. Yeah. Watch the same with thanksgiving. This is important to understand. You might say, why is it at the same time here, everything you're praying with thanksgiving and prayer, but it includes something, it includes watching. Why is that? Because some, some, does that mean something else can enter my mind? Mm -hmm. Something else can interfere with my mind? Yeah. If you don't believe the devil can tempt you or attack you in the middle of prayer, then you're gullible. Yeah. If you don't believe that you're capable of thinking like a horrible thought that you would have thought like, where did that come from in the middle of prayer? You're gullible. That's why being watchful is important in the middle of prayer. Mm -hmm. All right. What does being watchful have to do with Thanksgiving? The point is this, thanksgiving is your helper right here. It's the positive part that's entering your mind here, okay? That's what thanksgiving does. But, some, but that pot, you have to protect that. That's the idea. Like a shield, you have to protect that. You have to make sure that thanksgiving remains there. Nothing steals the thanksgiving. That's why you have to watch, see that? Why? If you don't watch, something can take away the thanksgiving. And then your prayer is going to change, and then your mood is going to change. Then your thinking pattern is going to change when you pray. Now, is this, uh, are you follow? you get what I'm saying, right? I think a lot of you know what I'm saying, because it does happen to you. So that's why when you're thanking the Lord, you got, that's why the Bible says watching, because something attacks your mind. This goes, they're all related, this passage. If you go back to Philippians 4, verse 6 and verse 7, what's the idea here? Look back at the passage. Be careful for nothing. That's the mind, right? So something goes in your mind. Verse 7, the last part. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now look at that. When Paul says you got to pray with thanksgiving, he knows it's a mind battle. It's a psychological warfare. So then Colossians 4, 2, when the Bible's telling you to watch, what's it watching for? Obviously, sp uh, spiritual attacks, right? Do spiritual attacks then have to do with mind games, mind warfare? Yes, absolutely. You know that verse, 2 Corinthians 10. Look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10. And then uh, we'll read verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And then we'll read verse 4. Uh, well, let's look at, uh, the Bible says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. See, there's some stronghold. But that's on the mind, verse 5, casting down imaginations. See, it's a warfare, psychological warfare. So you have to cast it down. And every high thing, so that's referring to devils. 
if you compare that with Ephesians 6, high thing is referring to high places, devils, in Ephesians 6. All right, but high thing, that's devils, that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, see, mind, and bringing into captivity every, notice right here, thought to the obedience of Christ. See, you have to, wa see, that's watching. See, you have to uh, bind your thought from the negative influence here. So this is the negative side right here. And this negative side is an unhealthy thing that you got to watch out for. And you got to shield th this part, which is thanking the Lord. So that's why it makes sense why Colossians 4 said, watch the same with thanksgiving. Okay? Because just because you thank the Lord, if you're not watching the same time, that gloomy mood's going to get you real soon and get you real quick. So you got to be watchful for that one. So Thanksgiving is a, uh, is a game changer. It will change your uh, well-being. It will change the way you pray. It is more healthy to it. It is even more beneficial to your health. But in order to do that, you got to watch out for this guy at the same time guard your Thanksgiving. Okay? Now, when you pray everything, going back now to this, when you pray everything... Watch out for this guy while thanking the Lord. Take guard. When you do that, trust me, your prayer life, you're going to sense a difference in prayer. Okay? You will sense a difference in prayer. Now, understanding that uh, all of this has to do uh, with spiritual warfare so that uh, you can watch out for the things going on in the mind. It's all mind games, so you got to watch out for that then what's going to happen is, is then uh, your health and well-being is going to change. And then uh, your, the mentality in prayer is going to change. It's going to be filled with thanksgiving. Now, when it's filled with thanksgiving, think about it, then is that not the proper prayer that God is pleased with? Is God more pleased with the prayer full of grief and bitterness and complaint or a prayer that keeps giving him glory? Now, you notice that right here, right? See, that's why this is so important. When you start out like this, mm -hmm. then the prayer comes out right to God. Yeah. And when the prayer comes out right to God, think about it, then you're praying the way you should be praying, which is how Moses got God to answer prayer. Mm -hmm. Then you got the secret powers to prayer that you always wanted, but you just never did it. What is it? you're concentrating on his glory finally. And because you're concentrating on his glory, prayers are now getting answered. But in order to produce that kind of prayer, it all starts from the heart, from the mind. So this has to start out. If you start out this way, the prayer will come out that way, and then God will see it as, oh yeah, my glory. It's all for my glory, all for my glory. I should answer this prayer then. That's good. See that? Mm -hmm. So it's concentrating on his glory. Now here's the thing is that um, we saw Philippians 4. That's one of the passages on how we can get God to answer our prayer. Is that you combine every request with thanksgiving. And you can write down that verse again. It mentioned about let your requests be made to, known to God with thanksgiving, right? So how do I get my God to answer my prayers? The point is, is that when you give your request and need to the Father, everything, right? That's what Philippians said. It's with thanksgiving here. When it's done that way, it will turn into his glory. You might say, how so? Let me bring up the car accident example again. The request is, Lord, will you please uh, repair our vehicle, provide our needs on that one? I want to thank you so much that you protected my life, that you took, uh, you've protected us from this damage in the car. Only a great God like you can do that. Amen. So then covering this other 
uh, bills is, not, is definitely not a problem with Man. you because you're a great God, and I want to thank you so much for protecting my life. Is a dollar bill too hard for you, Lord? Now, you notice when you pray that way, that gets God going. Yeah. And then God's like, no, nothing's too hard for me. What do you mean a dollar bill is too hard for me? Of course I can take care of that. And then you notice that right there? Yeah. So you concentrate on his glory. Is anything too hard for you, God? So when you do that, then uh, it's focusing on his glory a lot more And uh, when you concentrate on thanksgiving. Thanks, here's the thing. It's not hard to, uh, here's something you got to understand. Sometimes we pray so hard in prayer where we can get God to answer our prayer. And we're like, it's for your glory, Lord, it's for your glory. But sometimes you're putting too much effort into that. Why not let it come out naturally? How do you do it naturally, though, where you concentrate prayer on his glory? You do it with thanksgiving. That's real good. So when everything is done, right, with thanksgiving, where you're watchful for this one and guarding this one, then what happened? It'll naturally come out. And then the words that come out in prayer is not homework, and it's not like trying too hard, or the Lord saying, this guy's trying too hard but more it's natural and genuine from the heart. And shouldn't that be what prayer should be? As if it's like naturally breathing, as Ian Bounds would say. It's powerful, right? All right, is this making up for the absence? I hope it is. I hope it's making up for the absence, this study. All right, but I got a lot more, all right? So that'll be awesome. All right, so let's go to, uh, let's go to Timothy. 1 Timothy. If there's a subject that I'd like to learn more than blue-blooded aliens, it's prayer, amen? amen. 1 Timothy 4, 1 Timothy 4. Now, this is such an interesting passage, okay? Now, I'll just say this is my opinion, okay? This is my opinion. So we saw Philippians 4 that every single request should be done with thanksgiving, right? All right, we've seen that, why? Because Philippians 4 commanded it. Now, is there a passage, though, that if I were to pray every request with thanksgiving, that it's going to make God answer it? Is there a verse on that? Well, I've given you, uh, I've given you something that spiritually makes sense. I didn't give you a clear verse, but I gave you something that spiritually made sense. That basically, when you're doing things with thanksgiving, you're concentrating on his glory, right? And we do know from the Bible, if you concentrate prayer for his glory, he's going to answer, right? So I gave you a spiritual reason, but I have not given you a clear verse. This might be the verse, all right? This might be the verse that, the only verse that I could figure out in your Bible that will show clearly that um, when you pray something with thanksgiving, it's going to have to come to pass. God's going to have to answer. But like I said, this is just my opinion, okay? Look at right here. 1 Timothy 4, verse 4. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. Did you see that? So basically animals that we're eating. God says it's not refused. It cannot be denied. It cannot be rejected if it what? Be received with thanksgiving. So uh this is our justification that we can eat whatever we want, actually. Yeah, the reason why is because God says that nothing is rejected at all if it's received with thanksgiving. But this thanksgiving is based on, notice right here, two important things. For it is sanctified. In other words, that thanksgiving for that food to eat, it's cleansed, it's purified. So it has to be honored by God based on two things. One is obvious, the Bible, if it's correct in the Bible, by the word of God. And the second thing is what, though? Prayer. Okay, now this is very important to understand. This is how you can probably, okay, my opinion again, can get God to answer your request. How you get God to answer your request, notice right there that verse says, it cannot be refused. You notice that? What cannot be refused? The request. In this, pay, uh, in this uh, drawing here, let's go backwards, okay? So it cannot be refused, the request, if it's done 
with uh, thanksgiving. Thanks. So this thanks, so this thanks will make it not refused your request. What, what is it based upon? It's based upon this thanks comes from the prayer and the word of God. All right. Now, let me tell you how to get the Lord to answer your prayer. Remember, I gave you a teaching on prayer that basically that there are people, and this did happen throughout history, like George Mueller is a great example. Like when he prayed for God to answer the request, he knew that God would answer it. Yeah. It's uh, like he knew it was God's will. Now, I'm not telling you to act like a charismatic and you know, start praying and have faith and I know God's going to answer this. No, sometimes it's not his will, right? Sometimes his will is yes, no, or wait, right? But Mueller was different. Like he knew it would be a yes. What's the difference with Mueller and a charismatic? The difference with Mueller and a charismatic is because God has to answer yes if it's according to his will. That's the thing. But you and I don't know his will. Unless you really know his will, though, like George Mueller... Because he prayed so much with God like he knew what his will would be. That's why George Mueller knew God would answer yes, right? So that's an incredible prayer life, but also Bible study as well. Why? Because you know God's will cannot contradict his word. So here's the idea. The idea is this, is that in order for you to get your prayer request answered, and you know it's God's will... It's based on these two factors. One, you know it's God's will. How do you know that? Because you study that book so much. You know that's what the Bible says, so God has to take care of it. Here's an easy one. I know that uh, no matter however way, with the car accident thing, for example, again, however way it turns out, I know God has to answer according to Romans 8, 28. So whether God gives me money, doesn't give me money, or whatever, I know it's going to be Romans 8, 28. So if I pray, Lord, uh, I pray that this car accident will work out for your glory and in a way that will uh, make me happy and it will glorify you and it will work for good, I know God has to answer that. Why? Because it's based on the Bible. So when I pray that, he has to answer that. But it's, it goes now with prayer. What is with prayer? Prayer is because you've seen God answering your prayer many times. You have a strong relationship with him. So because of that, you know what God would say no to, what God would say wait, and what God would say yes. Now, you wouldn't know that unless you, had, unless you prayed for a while. But if you prayed for a while, I'm sure you can even agree with me somewhat on this. You know that's your God's character. Like, you can sometimes tell when you pray, like, God's going to say no, but I'm going to pray about it anyway. And no, right? And then you know God's going to say yes, and then God did it, right? So some of you, or wait, which is the worst answer, you know. So, so you know, but that comes with uh, constant prayer with the Lord, right? So that's the idea. The idea is this, is that if you have a strong prayer life and a Bible reading life, then what happens is then you know when you give that thanks to the Lord on that request, you do know God cannot refuse that. That's the idea. If you know, but it's all based on knowing God's will, right? So if you know God's will, then what happens is when you combine it with, uh, when you give God thanks for it, what do you think is going to happen? He cannot. He cannot refuse it. He has to answer it. That's powerful. Amen. But this is something that should be a no-brainer, but why did we forget this? Look at 1 Thessalonians 5. Why do we forget this? 1 Thessalonians 5. Man, I'm having so much fun tonight. How about you? Yeah. Amen. All right. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now look at verse 16, 17, 18. These are the three famous verses that people made songs out of. But it's like we never really understood. Verse 16, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, these are the three main verses that people know, all right? And I've learned it in Sunday school. 
But sometimes we don't even know the basics, so we have to go back to the basics. Amen? Yeah. So then, you ever notice that in verse 17 where it comes to continually praying, it adorns itself with praise? 16, rejoice evermore. 18, in everything give thanks. You notice that? That prayer is surrounded, it's adorned by praise. Going back right here, what did I tell you about prayer? It comes down to thanks and praise, doesn't it? And why did Paul, Paul could have talked about a lot of different things with thanksgiving. Why did he include prayer here and praise? Unless he knew that these guys are related to each other. These guys go together. See that? So it's so important to understand that praise is inseparable. Glorifying the Lord, thanking Him is inseparable for constant prayer. But here's something, keep, keep reading, we didn't look at this. In everything, give thanks for what? This is the will of God. That is powerful. How can, we, how can I be so stupid to overlook that? Why did God say that? Because, remember right here, all of this to get God to answer your prayer, it's all based on His will, right? Is it God's will? Is it God's will? Well, it is His will if you thank Him for it. Shouldn't He have to answer then? How about that? That's powerful, isn't it? That's, great. That's powerful. Extremely powerful. That is so powerful. It's going to get God to answer your prayer. So that's why Thanksgiving is so important. When you thank him, then what happens is this, is that he cannot refuse because it's going to be based off of his will. So it is so important. This tool in prayer, sadly, why is it the least used in prayer Thanksgiving? Why is it more of a grief or a complaint or a request of a need, uh, but not thanksgiving, when that is one of the most, if not the most important thing in your prayer life, that can get God to mightily answer prayers. It's so important. It's so important. It's ingrained. It's ingrained. It's inseparable. And trust me, like I told you before, you're going to be a lot more happy people after this too. You're going to come out more positive rather than negative. This is going to be life-changing. And this is, it's like I see the relationship. How can I be so stupid when I just read these verses thousands of times? When you compare that with Philippians 4, Paul is repeating that. Uh, Philippians 4, be careful for, for nothing, but in everything by prayer supplication. That match 1 Thessalonians 5.18, everything, the prayer you give thanks Philippians 4 says everything by prayer supplication with thanksgiving. But Philippians 4 mentioned the will of God too. It says the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus, right? Why? The, that's pointing out right there about in Christ, in God's will, beyond, surpassing your understanding what you think is the right thing. In Philippians 4. This is, they're inseparable. Philippians 4 and 1 Thessalonians 5. They're inseparable. How can we be so stupid not to see that before? Like, I read that verse so many times. I would memorize the verse. I just didn't see that. They're related. Man, it's incredible. All right. Now, uh, let me show you 1 Chronicles 16. First Chronicles 6, 16. Verse 35. Verse 35. Now, here's a good thing to do with Thanksgiving. You ready for this? You, you want to know this. Remember what I told you before. Thanksgiving is inseparable from prayer. Yeah. And prayer is inseparable from Thanksgiving. So, usually we know what it is. So, it's kind of like this.
you can start out with this and you end with this, but then you'll notice it's like going back and forth like that. That's what happens, okay? Now, here's the idea that's powerful, okay? God wants to receive thanks, praise, and worship. There's no doubt about that, right? I mean, Revelation 4 is so obvious. God receives praise 24-7 from the seraphim, cherubim. He wants that. Now, look at this. This is, this is amazing in prayer, okay? How do you get God to answer prayer with the thanksgiving part? This is important. First Chronicles 16, notice in verse 35, and... Uh, and say, save us, O God, of our salvation, and gather us together and deliver us from the heathen. So notice that's a prayer request, right? So they're giving their request to the Lord. But look at this. Lord, deliver us. Why? That we may give thanks to thy holy name and glory in thy praise. You know why that's important? That's important because the guy is praying... Lord, please answer this request so that I can thank you for it later. That's good. So that I can glorify for you it later. Now, don't you think the Lord, that he's going to like that and answer your prayer request? But, you know, when I think back, you know, when I started studying this and then I was thinking back, it made more sense to me. Like, uh, I would... Uh, so I would joke with my wife, you know, if the Lord blesses us with a new church building and a new place to live this year, like I'm going to glorify him more than ever before and thank him and prove that he's a God above all gods. And I did that deliberately too to her. I wanted the Lord to hear that, you know. God's not deaf, obviously, so God heard that. And guess what? <laughs> Praise the Lord. He got, me, he got me that. And guess what? I kept my word. I give him glory more than ever yeah. before. But in order for God to do miracles, then I realized that, hey, Gene, how can you be so stupid? You've done that before. Why not just keep doing that again? All right, so pray. If you start praying that way, see, you notice it gives him glory. You notice that? Lord, please answer this prayer so that I can glorify you, so that I can tell others how you mightily answered the prayer so that I can believe that you're genuinely a God above all gods. And God loves that. He loves being praised. Now, here's the dangerous thing. Look at Romans 1. I want to show you something very important, Romans 1. I should have showed you this passage earlier when we went to the mind, imaginations, because this is all connected to that, all right? Go to Romans 1. And then uh, Psalms 136. Psalms 136. Now, when I was uh, studying the Word of God about giving thanks to the Lord, this is what really, um, I saw this all over the Bible, and I just don't get it. I just don't get it. But whenever you look up... Uh, in the Bible about giving thanks to the Lord, this is what's the most mentioned. Now, if it's the most mentioned about giving thanks to the Lord, you'd want to pay attention, right? So this is it. Psalms 136, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Why? For he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods. For his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. For his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. Uh, to him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. Now you notice something right here about giving thanks to the Lord. This is very important. Another important thing that you've got to be doing. When you're thanking the Lord, let me put one thing here. So one, we learned... You pray in order to thank him later, right? But a second thing, 
right here is you pray with thanksgiving, right? Based on what? This is extremely powerful. God cannot go against this. And he has to answer a prayer in this manner. He has to. God is immutable. He cannot contradict his own attribute. He cannot contradict who he is. You'll notice what this Thanksgiving prayer is concentrated on. Who he is. That is extremely important. So when you pray with thanks to him, you got to concentrate on who he is. When you do that, he's going to answer it. Here's one. Uh, let's take the Psalms passage. His mercy endureth forever, right? So his attribute of mercy and grace. So then I go, Lord... Uh, I'm really sorry for the sin that I committed against you. Please cleanse with your holy blood. And uh, I know that, I, uh, that I'm going to have to reap what I sow. I'm going to have to end up a couple more years in prison, Lord, because of that sin that I committed. But Lord, uh, you are merciful. You are gracious. You're greater than all of our sins. Based on that attribute of yours, I want to thank you so much for your mercy and grace, for who you are. Will you forgive me? And will you give me a chance as well to not end up in prison? Because of who you are, you are a merciful and gracious God. Now, what do you think the Lord will do? See, what he loves is thanking him for who he is. And if you recognize that for who he is when you pray, your prayer life changes. And your heart and mentality toward the Lord changes. So that is so important. you got to pray with thanks for who he is. And I think you need it more than God, to be honest. Yeah. The reason why is you forget who he is. Yeah. And because you forget who he is, that's why you get scared when you pray and you don't think God's going to answer your prayer and you're afraid of some bad thing that's going to happen. I think you need to know more who he is than God needs to know who he is. Amen. You need to know he's merciful, long-suffering, gracious, plenteous in mercy. How many times has he's gotten you out of a rut and taken care of you? I mean, uh, why lose faith? I think you need to know who he is, not him. All right, so that becomes powerful. Now look at Romans 1. This is the dangerous part, okay? This is the dangerous part here. The dangerous part is, let's say you don't glorify the Lord. Let's say you don't thank him. Okay, if you don't glorify God and don't thank him when you pray, then this is what happens to you. Okay. Romans 1 20. Now notice Romans 1 20. It's repeating the apostle Paul is thinking like the psalmist as Psalms 136. All right. That we looked at. All right. Verse 20 for the invisible things. Of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So the psalmist, as Psalms 136, he described God's creation, right? About who he is, God is. So what did the psalmist do? He gave thanks, right? Now Paul's going to warn you what happens when you don't do that. Look at verse 21. Because that when they knew God... Guilty, right? You know God. You know he created it, but you did not glorify him. Neither were you thankful, were, were you? Are you guilty of that when you pray? Then what happens? Okay, look at this. Go back to the beginning. Philippians 4, 2 Corinthians 10. It's all tied together. So then, when you pray to the Lord... You're not thanking him for who he is. You're not thanking him, right? What happens then? You're not guarding, right? The thanks. Then what's being attacked here? The mind. It's being attacked here. This creepy little guy is coming out again, right? The negative. So then that floods your mind. And Bob Jones Sr. once said, an idle mind 
is the devil's workshop. That's why you need to replace that dark thinking of yours with prayer. Amen. But what happens when you don't do that? Look at this. Verse 21, but became what? Vain in their imaginations. That's why 2 Corinthians 10, Philippians 4 warns you about that mind, about that imagination. The devil's going to get there. Now, I want you to think about yourself. Is this you when I'm reading the passage? Like, verse 20, God created everything, so you should thank him for who he is, right? But 21, you know God, but you didn't glorify him. You didn't thank him, right? So what happens at verse 21? Your imagination started running, didn't it? And then that mind started running, and then it was fear, it was worry, it was guilt, and it was even, let's see, uh, uh, um, uh, oh, right now I'm not in my best, best uh, delivery, sorry. Uh, the mind starts running about fleshly stuff. See, so now you gave up prayer now. Now it's resorting to a different peace for you. So the imagination becomes vain now. And then you start to think about fleshly thing. And is that what happened? Yeah, keep reading. Look at verse uh, 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts. Right? Then you sin. Then you sin a little more. Then... Am I hitting you right now? Yeah, see that? That's what happens. That's why, you watch, right? Watch. You got to glorify him for who he is. If you, start, if you don't pray with thanksgiving, you know what's going to happen? It's going to be these stuff in your mind. See that? These negative things. That's why you have to pray with thanksgiving. Do you see that? You have to pray with thanksgiving so you can do that. All right, going back to 1 Timothy 4, this will be the last thing. First Timothy 4, let's go back. Oh, I forgot another passage. Uh, we're going to look at Matthew 27 too. I want you to look at Matthew 27, uh, 26, excuse me, Matthew 26. And then I want you to look at 1 Timothy 4. Now, we, uh, Chuck, he was known to be a prayer warrior in our church. I'll never forget that man. He's a big blessing to me. But uh, that brother prayed a lot. But a lot of times when he would pray, he would do this. He would pray to the Lord for the request. And this is one of those strange things that he did. What he did was, as soon as he gave the request to the Lord, he automatically thanked the Lord after that. Lord, I thank you for answering that prayer according to your promise and your word, blah, 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 blah. I was like, that's a very interesting way to pray. I'll tell you what, his prayer life worked. His prayer life worked. I've seen that man. Uh, now, how can he get such confidence to do that? Like, when I give this prayer request to the Lord, in the future, I know he's going to answer that, so I'm going to thank him for answering that. How did he get that? The thing is, it goes back to 1 Timothy 4 right here, see? It's based off of, like I told you, the will of God. How do you know the will of God? You have a strong relationship with him in prayer, and you read his word a lot. When you do that, you know what God's going to do. So then, because of that, that's why he was able to pray, but be confident enough that God would even answer it later on and thank him for that. So in 1 Timothy 4, notice right here again, verse 4, For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So here's something that's powerful as well, is that not only pray in order to thank him, but uh, pray... Uh, Pray as if he will answer. Pray as if he will answer it with thanks. 
that becomes powerful too. But this is only based if you know God's will. That's very important to understand. If you know God's will, then you can do something like that. Then you can do things like George Mueller did, like praying with faith and believing that God would give him uh, answer that request. So that's very important to do. Uh, if you do that, then it's going to become very powerful. It's as if that God has to do that or God will do that. So that's why you're glorifying him for that, giving him praise for that. Uh, here's another thing. Another thing is, now it comes down to the question, well, what if we give a prayer to the Lord that is not based off of his will? So then when we give a prayer like that, can we give him thanks? That's the thing, right? Can we give him thanks? This is a very powerful passage that I want you to go to. Go to Matthew 26. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Jesus is the best example on prayer. And uh, I could be wrong about saying this, but I'm going to dare say this, is that Jesus Christ, he did not give God thanks here when he prayed. Now you might say, why is that? Because he knew, he knew that it may not be God's will. But nevertheless, here's something very important to understand. Yet why is Jesus' prayer life very powerful? So this is the lesson I want to end with. So if you're that type of person that's trying to apply the prayer with thanks, right? So that God can answer the prayer. But you're at a prayer request that, you know, I don't know if this is God's will. I have a feeling he's going to say no. So then how can I pray powerfully with God? You still can. not So let's look at Jesus' case, okay? And that's okay, all right? That's okay. Look at Matthew chapter 26. Notice what Jesus did at verse 39. The Bible says, And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. See, so notice right here that Jesus was at a point where he could see that uh, it could be God's will or it may not be his will, but I want to follow his will. So, Hold your hand here and go to Mark 14, all right? This is what I want to end up with. This is going to be very helpful for you. You know what? I'm going to have to add a third verse because they all match. Romans 8, Romans 8, Romans 8. This is going to be really good, all right? It's going to be helpful to you if you can't do the prayer with thanksgiving part according to God's will. All right, look at Mark 14. Here's the key here, all right? Notice that Jesus nevertheless still concentrated on the Father's glory. Remember, that's the main ingredient where God can answer prayer, right? Look at Mark 14, verse 36. And he said, Abba, Father, what did he say right here? All things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. Now, notice right here, there are two things here, all right? So you, you probably want to write this down. This is stuff where you don't combine with thanksgiving. So if you don't do that, this is what you need to do. One, notice Jesus Christ still concentrated on his attribute, who he is, God, right? He said, all things are possible with thee. So he used that to get an answer prayer from the Father. That's one. Number two. Notice right here, Jesus Christ did not think it's a waste of time. And he prayed faithfully, like three times. If you look at Matthew 26, 44, he prayed the same words three times. Now, Jesus, if he knows that this prayer is for nothing, God's not going to answer it, then why did he pray three times? See that there? That means Jesus knows that prayer does have the power where it can change the mind of the Father. Otherwise, he wouldn't repeat the same words or do it three times if he didn't think it was possible for the Father to get the cup to pass from him. See that? So then he was, so Jesus Christ knew, but he prayed anyway. 
so much for the sovereignty of God, right? And the foreknowledge of Jesus, like knowing ahead in the future what's going to happen, but he did it anyway. <laughs> Show that to a Calvinist, all right? Jesus is so anti-Calvinist that Calvinists can't even read the passage. Notice right here, Jesus would even know what would happen in the future, but he prayed anyway. See, he knows it's possible with the Father. So then, Jesus Christ prayed fervently. All right? So he prayed fervently because he knew, uh, cause he had a, he knew that it's not going to be the Father's will. So he's hoping that there might be an alternative option that might align with the Father's will, right? That's why he said all things are possible with thee. Another thing here is this, is that verse 36, notice he said, Abba, Father. Do you notice that? He got personal. Now, when you're giving a prayer request to the Lord, and it cannot be done with thanksgiving because you have a fear or a concern or a worry that it's not going to align with his will, then it's important that you get personal with God. Heavenly Father, I worship you, I adore you, I glorify you, you're King of kings, Lord of lords, but I also know that uh, it's okay that I can be personal with you. You're my Father. So I'm going to tell you, Lord, this really hurts me. I'm in grief. I'm hurting, Lord. And it's hard to concentrate on your glory right here. So I'm being personal with you, Father, but I'm going to concentrate on your glory at the same time. Will you see my heart and my grief right here? And you don't think the Father, he uh, knows the feeling of our infirmities, Hebrews 4. See, he wants you to pour out your personal emotion. So that's what happens. So that's the third case. Romans 8 is very powerful on that. That lines up with it. Keep your hand at Matthew, though, okay? Romans 8. Notice verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, right? Our personal grievances, our hurt. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And verse 27, he maketh intercession for the saints, what? According to the will of God. Now notice right here that your personal grievances can align with God's will and that the Holy Spirit can translate it for you. But look what follows along with that, which is intensely interesting. Look at verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, what? Abba, Father, like Jesus did. So it's okay to give out the personal grievance. Why? So you can be personal with the Lord. And even if your prayer request is incorrect, don't worry. Romans 8, 26 and 27, the Holy Spirit will correct it and align it with God's will. But it's okay to be personal with Him. See that? So encourage yourself with that. All right. And then another thing here, when we look at Mark 14, uh, verse 38, isn't it interesting? Jesus Christ, even though in this case we don't see prayer with thanksgiving, he realizes in verse 38, watch, eat, and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. See, the watching never left. So even if you're not praying with thanksgiving, but pouring out a personal grief to the Lord, you never drop the watching. You know why? Because that devil can easily get inside your personal grievance and make it personal. Turn it to bitterness. Turn it to something dark. So you always have to be watchful. All right, the last, so then uh, what you want to do, if you're not doing the prayer with thanksgiving and you're like, but I want to have a powerful prayer life, you still can follow Jesus' example. Make it personal, concentrate who he is, Pray fervently, and then also, oh my goodness, there's no room. Okay. Concentrate who he is. Uh, four. Uh, watch, right? Five. Get a crowd, get other people with you. Jesus' prayer should be sufficient, but he saw it fit to bring three other disciples with him to pray with him. Isn't that interesting? 
Look at Matthew 26, verse 37 through 38. See that? Jesus says, watch here with me. I'm under so much sorrow. Verse 41, Jesus told them to pray with him. See that? How about it? Jesus Christ is a better prayer warrior than all of them, but he even believed, I need others to pray with me. That's powerful. That's why we always, uh, when, I mean, that should be common sense. If you're going through a personal grievance, you don't pray by yourself. You ask everybody, you know, please pray for me and help me, right? That's normal. So that means there's more powers in numbers. See that? There's more power in numbers. There's more power in numbers. So that's important. Last thing is this. Last thing, which is very important, and it's a no-brainer, is that obviously uh, when we're not praying with thanksgiving, that's because we're not sure what God's will is, right? So that's why that's the most important. You nevertheless surrender to his will. So in the end, you have to surrender to his will. That's important. You might say, why is that? Because trust me, you don't want God to answer your prayer when it's not his will. Trust me, you don't want that. That's the worst thing you can ever do in life. It's to always surrender, surrender to his will. So not just his will, you have to surrender to it. Well, I'm having a hard time surrendering. Then ask him. You don't think he'll help you? Lord, it's hard for me to understand. Hard to me to surrender to your will. Will you help me out here? And Romans 8, believe that promise. The Holy Spirit uh, feels that personal grievance you're going through that confusion, that uh, difficulty to surrender to his will, but there is a willingness in there. So then he'll bring it to the Father, and the Father will help you. See that? So that's what you can do when you don't pray with thanksgiving. See that? So notice right here, we don't see Jesus Christ thanking the Lord. Oh, thank you so much that I die on the cross of Calvary. No, it's not that. This is, Lord, I, I don't want this. I don't want this. But that did not make his prayer uh, power less effective than a person who prayed with thanksgiving. Our Lord and Savior has the most, is the best example of prayer to follow. So we can see right here in his case where he didn't pray with thanksgiving, he still had a powerful prayer. He still had a powerful prayer, and you can do that. All right, did you enjoy tonight? All right. Father God, I pray tonight's teaching has been life-changing, and it will change our prayer walk with you. Dismiss us now with your blessing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.